Kevin, let's talk Elimination Chamber, man. Match number one, Drew Gulak versus Daniel Bryan. Best match of the night, in my opinion. Old school scientific contest. They got the fans in it. Drew is not on the level of a Daniel Bryan, but Daniel raised him up. But that German suplex was scary. That suplex, man. That Anytime I see Bryan wrestle, I always get a little cringy because I'm thinking dude's going to hurt himself and hurt himself bad. But that suplex, and I know it was supposed to look rough and hard hitting. I'm, I'm we talked about this. I'm not sure that that was supposed to look that bad, but uh, that suplex. Uh. I think it was a mistake they landed on his back, but by the end, uh, both men were covered in bruises. They worked hard. Um, and Drew Gulak really showed me a lot. Great match, just all around match of the night, right off the bat. Great match. Great way to kick it off. How about Andrade and Umberto? What were your thoughts? Uh, I thought that was the second best match. So that was a little bit of my issue with the pay-per-view as a whole is that they probably didn't have the matches in the correct order, but it made a nice contrast to the first contest because that was on the mat, hard hitting mat based match. These guys have great chemistry together. They took to the air. Uh, They put on a great, another great match. Andrade goes over. uh, Thanks of course to Zelina, who I think is the best manager in the business today. Her reactions are spot on. She's perfect at ringside. The great pace match, the heel one was using a little bit of a heel tactic. Great match start to finish again, I have to agree. Then next we get our first uh, chamber match. Then this was a tag team chamber match, and I honestly wasn't quite sure how this was going to work. I quickly realized that this is not anything near a traditional tag team match of any sort. It's just everybody in the ring at at a free-for-all. So that got a little confusing and and pretty chaotic pretty pretty quick, I thought. But the crowd seemed pretty quiet through a lot of it. Um, I made a a note here that I think that the crowd was taken out of it by the number of intros. After those two hot matches, you sort of need a come down. So it was kind of odd. Usually when they have a chamber events and there's two chambers, they'll start with one, they'll end with one. So you have two ma- singles contest and then you have this uh, one chamber match where it was 20 minutes of intros to get everybody into the ring. So it really didn't pick up and the crowd didn't get back into it until Lucha House Party got in. And you and I talked the other night that they are not anywhere near uh, title contention, but they would be in there to take the bumps. And that is exactly what they did. And that ignited the crowd. Yeah, I even made a note here that, uh, where is it, uh, Kevin called it, Lucia, bring the high spots. You know, you really, got, you know, they really did warm up the crowd and get, get, get things going. And the spots, that spot from the top of the top of the chamber down, my goodness. Shooting Star Press by Lince Dorado was definitely the spot of the night. Um, and then the crowd kind of stayed in it for the rest of it. And I thought the rest of the contest actually was, was pretty good. Probably really the better as far as wrestling goes of the two chamber matches that night. Uh, heavy machinery was very, very over. Very uh, over. But once they were out of it, the fans kind of seemed a little deflated. And it kind of went the way we thought it was going to go with uh, uh, the champions retaining. Yep. Miz, Miz and Morrison. So what do you think, uh, AJ versus Black? You know, for me, this one, this one could have been great. This could have been a, a, a five, six star ratings breaking match, but knowing what it was going into it, it kind of took, took it out because at the end of the night, this was a match to put Undertaker AJ over for WrestleMania. It was a, a match to build towards that. The no DQ stipulation, you knew we we're going to get those uh, heel shenanigans with the OC interfering. Eventually Undertaker would come in uh, and, and take the, take the wind out of AJ's sails and get black the wind. And that's basically what happened not to take away from either one of these performers. Cause I think they're both great, but this one was just telegraphed too early on. I think. If it had been anybody else, I'd probably been, you know, thinking it was a solid match, but considering the two guys involved, I know I mentioned in our pre-show uh, preview rather that I thought it could be match of the night. It never got into second gear. Uh, all the three-on-one uh, attacks kind of got old, and it ended up being just really a match to set up an angle. And, of course, that angle is going to pay off big at WrestleMania with Undertaker and AJ. So, yeah, probably my disappointment of the night. But that black mass at the end was maybe the best black mass I'd ever seen delivered. Absolutely. Style, like a champ. So uh, I was having some Internet problems last night. So right after this black uh, AJ match, my internet goes out right when the Street Profits and Rollins and Murphy are coming on, and I don't come back until the end of the match after that with Braun Strowman, Nakamura, 
Sami Zayn and Cesaro. You want to you want to talk about these because I've not went back and watched them. I have I had a sneaking suspicion of what was going to happen. More Telegraph stuff, but I'm going to let you talk about this. You your internet picked a good time to go out because those were the two things that really it was okay to miss. And again, I'm talking pacing a lot about this show. Odd booking to put these kinds of matches all right together because they all were should have been dispersed throughout the card. Uh, I don't, I, you know, I expected more, honestly, from Street Profits and, and Murphy and Rollins. Uh, all four guys are tremendous athletes and they just weren't clicking. And I don't know if it was the fact the crowd had got a little dead, uh, maybe worn out uh, after the chamber match. But the crowd wasn't into it and the wrestlers didn't seem either. And uh, much like uh, A.J. Black uh, suffered, I think, because of uh, a worn out crowd, uh, it was the same thing where we were just waiting for the Kevin Owens interference. It came uh, again. It was a match to set up an angle and they did that two two matches in a row, which was odd. Uh, the three on one uh, uh, contest. Uh, I talked before, I think, about how I dislike handicap matches in general, because unless it's 74 and it's Andre against a bunch of jobbers, uh, it's no point in doing three uh, three on ones, four on ones, five on ones, uh, because usually the one actually wins and buries the other five guys. Because I think if you actually statistically look at handicap matches through the years, the person who's supposed to be at the disadvantage usually overcomes. So it usually predicts the ending. So the one good thing I'll say about the match is that the ending was a surprise. As should happen, three superstars beat one superstar. So that part was cool. The fact that goes on Zayn, who hasn't had a even really in-ring action in a while, I like that. He has a history with Braun Strowman. I think it's setting something up for WrestleMania. And uh, Zayn is tremendous on the microphone. So I'm looking forward to, just if nothing else, him uh, over the next month, uh, running scared from Braun Strowman while trying to look tough. That part will be entertaining. I think I think anything that gets gold on Sammy is great. So I didn't get get a see. I haven't went back and watched it yet. But again, anything with gold on Sammy, um, I'll put a check check for that. So let's roll into this women's elimination chamber. We've talked about it, and we we we're fairly certain we knew the outcome going into this, and. And I think the rest of the world did too, which may have led to some of the uh, reasons why we were hearing rumblings that Vince wasn't happy with Shayna Baszler after last week's Raw. And maybe I'm thinking that was a work to maybe throw a little bit of doubt into the, uh, the, the final outcome of this match. But my goodness, Baszler looked like a million bucks. I don't think that it'll be looked at back uh, as far as, you know, rewatchability. It's not a, a, a match where it's a back and forth or there was a lot of high spots. It was just one person dominating in a way we've not seen in an elimination chamber before doing that every now and then uh, works in this instance. I think they're trying to get Baszler over to the general audience that might not be familiar with her NXT work. And they couldn't have done a better job than having her tap out all of the other five participants in the elimination. Chamber. Yes, absolutely. Through them like, like Brock Lesnar did at the Royal Rumble, and that made him look like a million bucks. She comes out looking like the new Ronda Rousey and a legit threat to Becky at uh, WrestleMania. So predictable finish, but it was kind of fun watching them get there, and and the and the crowd was into it. So I, I'm cool with the way the the main event went. I'm very cool with the main event. With the main event, and really, you know, it's, it's a pay per view that started hot, had some had some very slow spots there in the middle, and you know. Got us where we needed to be on the road to WrestleMania, I think. I think it's, set, it, it's beautifully set up things to come forward, and I can't wait to see what comes next. I'm with you. If you're going back and just going to pick uh, some of this to watch, watch those first two matches, watch Baszler dominate at the end. The rest of it, you can probably just rely on our recap. I think we, uh, I think that would be the three highlights you'd need to hit. Sounds good. Well, thanks, everybody, for joining us. I'm Doug, that's Kevin, we've been talking wrestling, and that is a recap of WWE's 2020 Elimination Chamber in under 10 minutes. Peace out, everybody.